Do you pray to God without giving Him the opportunity to speak? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. A father and his young daughter were great friends and much in each other's company. Then the father noted a change in his daughter. If he went for a walk, she excused herself from going. He grieved about it, but could not understand. When his birthday came, she presented him with a pair of exquisitely worked slippers, saying, I have made them for you. Then he understood what had been the matter for the past three months, and he said, My darling, I like these slippers very much, but next time buy the slippers and let me have you all the days. I would rather have my child than anything she can make for me. Some of us are so busy for the Lord that He cannot get much of us. To us, He would say, I know your works, your labor, your patience, but I miss the first love. Prayer is central in today's readings. In the first reading, the young Samuel was being called by God, but he did not recognize his voice. Samuel needed the priest Eli to appreciate God's voice. Eli showed Samuel and us the right way to start our prayer with the words, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening to open ourselves up for what God wants us to do. In the Gospel reading, while we are not told how Jesus prayed, it gives us an indication. When the apostles led by Simon Peter found him praying, they told him the schedule for that day, which included going back to Capernaum to preach. Jesus responded that his father wanted him to go elsewhere. Oftentimes, what God wants us to do is not what we want to do. Even in our prayer time, we insist on the direction we want to take and finish our prayers without really listening to God's directions. We mistake our discernment as God's when we have not really given God the opportunity to tell us what to do simply because we did not take time to listen. We fill our prayer time with all our petitions and we oftentimes hurry in our prayers because we need to catch an appointment, a trip, a person, a task in the next instant. We fill our day with so much that at the end of the day, we are so tired to even think of and thank God for a safe day. Jesus teaches us today that even if we are tired and sleepy, just like Him, we must make time for prayer. And listening in prayer is essential to make the right decisions in life. If your prayer time is in the early morning, bring yourself in front of Him. Perhaps this is the best time to listen even if you slept very late the night before. Wash your face, get your coffee, and settle down. You will be surprised at what God can reveal to you if you just stay put to listen. If your prayer time is in the evening, but you are unable to fulfill such with energy and enthusiasm because of tiredness and sleepiness, switch to an early morning prayer time when your mind is refreshed from sleep and you are able to listen in the stillness and quietness of the moment. Whatever time, though, is suitable for a listening moment in prayer for you is the best time. When you listen to the Lord's promptings as you pray, there are times when He speaks to you differently from what you want. When confronted with a concern or a decision to make, He comes to you to ask you to do that which is not what you want, that which is uncomfortable, difficult, that which will not sit best with people, but is the right, the moral, the holy thing to do. Listening in prayer allows the Lord's words to sink deeply in us so that we can be fully convinced, encouraged, emboldened, empowered. And the gauge of God's voice speaking loudly and clearly is a peaceful heart when the path you need to take is not your own. We can come to Jesus oftentimes not to learn more about Him, not to praise and worship Him. We can come for physical healing, to solve a marital problem, to get through a tough time in our life. But certainly, we have motives to come to Him other than spiritual. We just want magic to be performed in front of us, a miracle for our maladies, a solution to our situation. That is why it is hard to listen. Just like those who came in droves to the house of Simon Peter's mother-in-law, they who were desperate for healing and couldn't care less who or what will heal them, they just came. Perhaps in your sickness, some of you went to a quack or witch doctor or tried some ritual that could be considered as superstition, with the lame excuse that nothing will be lost if you do such. Of course, everything will be lost. Our faith in God requires of us to come to Him and Him alone for our concerns. Resorting to forms other than what He tells us means we do not trust Him enough. 
That is why we need to get away from the hustle and bustle of life so that we can hear God loud and clear. St. Francis de Sales, 17th century writer, said that Christ-like simplicity is similar to what we see in little children, who with one hand cling to their father and with the other gather strawberries or blackberries along the hedges. Or just like this, while you are gathering and dealing with the world's goods, you must always keep the other hand in your heavenly fathers, turning to him from time to time to see if the way you behave and what you do pleases him. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, speak to me. Your servant is listening. Help me to discern what to do and where to go. Assure me as I listen intently that you will accompany me all the way. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.